So uh, hi guys, here I am, as promised, um, with our new class book, which is A Boy and a Bear in a Boat by Dave Shelton. Uh, I spoke to Dave Shelton a couple of days ago on Twitter to ask him if he was happy for us to record his book being read and to be able to share some of the uh, amazing illustrations that are inside and he was absolutely thrilled that we want to choose his book as our new class book for our home learning. So I thought I'd start with um, reading the blurb to you which is on the back. So it says a boy and a bear go to sea equipped with a suitcase, a ukulele and a comic book. They're not traveling very far and it shouldn't take long but their voyage takes a number of unexpected twists and together they must face stormy seas, a terrifying sea monster and once they start to feel peckish, the revolting remains of the very last sandwich. Will Harriet withstand the violent lashing of the salty waves? Will the bear explain exactly where they're heading? And will anyone ever answer their message in a bottle? So it sounds quite exciting so far. Not sure about that bit about the revolting remains of the very last sandwich. Revolting remains don't sound very good. So here we go. A boy and a bear in a boat. So chapter one, stepping aboard. Welcome aboard, said the bear, standing and turning to face the boy. He had been holding the boat steady as the boy got in. Now he released his grip on the wooden jetty and pushed them out into the water and the boy felt an unsteadiness beneath his feet. Hello, said the boy. The rolling of the boat put a tremble in his voice. Where to, said the bear. The boy wobbled back to the rear seat, concentrating as the hull rolled and bounced beneath him. He half sat and half fell onto the hard wooden bench, bashing his wrist painfully against the edge as he landed. Ow, he said. Just over to the other side, please. He waved his unbashed hand vaguely out across the water without looking up. Right you are, said the bear. The boy stowed his bag beneath his seat. He found a gap in the jumble of junk already taking up most of the space there and then pushed quite hard to persuade the bag into place. There was a small crunching noise. The boy looked up guiltily towards the bear, but it seemed he hadn't heard. He was sitting on the front seat, fitting the oars into place. He dipped the blade of one oar into the water and pulled on it briefly, turning the boat to face away from the jetty. The boy felt the boat wobble and then settle, and the insides of his stomach did the same. The bear took a look over his shoulder and squinted into the distance. He made a small low noise and then he reached forward and dropped the base of the oar into the water and pulled back on the handles in a long, easy moment, setting the boat into motion. Away we go, he said. Will it take long, said the boy. A little while, said the bear. Away from the shade of the jetty, they were in the full glare of the sun and the boy felt itchily hot. He took off his coat and scrunched it up on the seat beside him. He looked at the bear. He was a big bear and the boat was only a small boat. When he leaned forward at the start of each stroke, it was as if he were lunging towards the boy, reaching out to grab him. And the boat pitched and rolled and bounced as if the world had become unfixed. It was a little unnerving. He would be glad to get to where he was going, back on firm ground again. He looked past the bear, out over the water ahead of them. You can't even see it from here, can you? He said. I thought you'd be able to see it. No, it's quite a way, said the bear. The boy leaned back, raising his face towards the sun. He closed his eyes and played with the colours of darkness he could see by pressing his eyelids more and less tightly together. He looked, he, sorry, he liked the greeny blue the best, but it was difficult to hold on to for very long. He yawned and lulled his head forward and his eyes fell open again. He watched the bear. It was a reassuring sight. He rode as if it were the most natural movement he could make. As natural as walking or breathing even. 
He had a steady, casual rhythm and seemed to be making almost no effort at all, but the boat sped along just the same. The boy closed his eyes again and listened to the rhythm of the oars. Splish, splish, splish. It was rather calming and the boat was only gently rocking now, soothing rather than unsettling him. He leaned out over the side of the boat and looked down at the water, watching through half-closed eyes the dancing patterns of sunlit ripples. Then he trailed a hand into the water and made patterns of his own. The water was cold, but pleasingly so. He pulled his hand back inside the boat and yawned again. Without realising it, he pulled his legs up onto the seat so he was lying on it, curled up to fit the space. The sunlight on the water was too bright for comfort, so he moved his head back inside the boat. Resting it on his bunched up coat, he looked at the weave of the fabric and picked out the detail by the sunlight. He felt the warmth of the sun on his skin. He listened to the oars steady as a heartbeat and the gentle lapping of the waves. He felt the sway of the boat beneath him, rocking like a cradle. He closed his eyes. Chapter 2. Unforeseeable Anomalies When the boy opened his eyes again, he couldn't think for a moment where he was. But then, the faint taste of salt on his lips, the smell of damp fur, and the sound of the oars dipping into the water, splish, 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 all helped remind him. And then his bleary eyes focused, and he saw the bear. Oh, yes. He sat up, shrugging off a tatty blanket that had been draped over him, and blinked hard twice. Then he looked past the bear. There was still no sign of land ahead of them, but there was no sign of land that they'd set out from behind them either. In fact, in every direction, all he could see was sea and sky. He looked at his watch, but it showed exactly the time now, the same time now as it had when they'd set off. He held it to his ear, but it was silent. It stopped, he said sleepily. The bear looked at him as if noticing him for the first time. Good morning, said the bear. The boy stared at him with wide awake eyes. What? he said. Good morning, the bear said again, a little puzzled. Morning, said the boy. Yes, said the bear. It's morning, said the boy. Yes, said the bear. So, it's tomorrow, said the boy. The bear considered this. Well, no, he said. Obviously, it can't be tomorrow, can it? It's today. It's, it's always today, isn't it? But yes, it is the today that was tomorrow yesterday, if you see what I mean. So I slept all night, said the boy. I thought I just had a nap. Oh no, said the bear. You were asleep for hours. But, said the boy frowning, doesn't that mean we should be there by now? I mean, I know you said it would take a little while, but I thought you meant an hour or so. Not all night. So shouldn't we be there? Or at least be able to see it by now. Oh, I see what you mean, said the bear. Well, yes, normally we would have arrived by now. But unfortunately, there were unforeseeable anomalies in the currents. And we had to adjust our course a bit. So now we're running a little behind schedule. Sorry. Oh, I see, said the boy. He didn't see at all. But we are nearly there. Not really, no. The boy's face fell. But everything is in hand, said the bear. Don't worry. The bear stopped rowing, pulled in the oars, and with little difficulty took out from under his seat a large battered suitcase. He opened it up and took out a folded up piece of old yellowed paper. He rather clumsily unfolded it and then held it in front of him as if he were reading a large newspaper. 
The side that the boy could see was unmarked, except for a few smears of dirt and a squashed bug, but one corner had flopped over so that the boy could just see a little of what was printed on the other side. There was a corner of blue with a grid marked over it and numbers along the edges. So at least the bear had a map. That was reassuring. The bear examined the map closely. In fact, the boy could see from his side a bump in the paper where the bear's nose was pressed against it. The bump moved about a bit and the bear hummed and mumbled to himself. Then the bear folded up the map, which took him three attempts, put it in the case and took out a telescope. He put it to his eye and looked across the sea ahead of them and hummed and mumbled some more. Then he put the telescope away and with a little more difficulty than it had taken to get it out, put the case back beneath the seat. Is everything all right? said the boy. The bear shook off a slight frown and smiled in the boy's direction. Oh yes, he said. Absolutely tickety-boo. The boy assumed that tickety-boo was a good thing. We just need to keep an eye on where we are. Don't want to run into any sea monsters, do we? said the bear. The boy was a bit alarmed by this until he realised the bear was joking. At least, he was fairly sure he was joking, though he chose not to ask. And are we nearly there yet? said the boy. We're well on our way, said the bear. The boy shivered and picked up his coat. By the way, said the bear, did you happen to bring any food with you? Okay, I hope you've enjoyed our first two chapters of our new home learning book. Um, I'm very intrigued to see where this bear is going. I'm not quite sure he knows where he's going based on uh, him looking at the map and studying it so closely. Um, and I'm also wondering, do you think that the boy brought any food with him? Um, I'll try to uh, record some more chapters tomorrow, but I hope you enjoyed the first two. Bye!